Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In today's session, we will be talking some of the important topics in C Sharp, that is C Sharp loops. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So if you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological trends, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now without further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's session. In this session, we will be introducing you to the C-sharp loops. Then we will go over all the different loops in C-sharp with detailed explanations and code examples. So I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now let's get started with introduction to C-sharp loops. Programming frequently necessitates the repeated execution of a sequence of operations. A loop is a basic programming construct that allows the execution of a piece of software code to be repeated. Depending on the loop's type, its code is repeated a set of number of times or until a certain time is reached. The condition is correct. Next, we will look at the various types of loops in C Sharp. First, we will look at while loop. Then, we will have do while loop. After that, we have for loop. Following that, we have for each loop in C Sharp. Then, we have nested loops after that then break and continue and finally we will have switch statements in c sharp we will look at these different types of c sharp loops in depth including an introduction syntax flowchart diagram and code example first we will look at the while loop while the condition is any expression that returns a boolean result true or false and one is the simplest and most used loops is known as the loop condition because it determines how long the loop body will be repeated. The loop body in this example is the programming code executed at each iteration of the loop that is whenever the input is true. Here is the syntax of a while loop. We have the keyword while, we have the condition, we have the code body inside the brackets. The while loop flow diagram is shown below. Now let's look at how a while loop works. In the while loop, the boolean expression is first calculated and if it's true the sequence of operations in the loop body are executed the input condition is then checked again and if it's true the loop body is executed once more all of this is repeated until the conditional expression returns false at some point at this point the loop is terminated and the program proceeds to the next line immediately following the loop's body if the cycle condition returns false at start the body of the while loop may not be executed even once. If the cycle's condition is never broken, the loop will continue indefinitely. Let's look at a simple example of while loop in action. The loop's purpose is to print the numbers 1 through 15 in ascending order on the console. Let's put the program to test and see how it performs. In this program, we have a constructor variable called i and we initialize it to 1 and execute the loop body while the loop condition is true. After that, we run a while loop up to 15 times and then we print that counter variable and increment by 1 at the same time. Now let's quickly execute the program and see the output. There you go. The program got successfully executed and you can see the output right on my screen. Next, we will look at the do while loop and try to understand it. The do while loop is like a while loop, but it checks the condition after each loop body execution. This loop type is also known as loop with the condition at the end or post test loop. A do while loop appears as follows. Here is the syntax. In the do while syntax, we have the keyword do first, then the code body to execute and finally the condition following the while keyword. Here is the flow diagram of do while loop. Let us see how do while's flow diagram works. The loop body is executed first and its condition is evaluated later. If it is true, the loop's body is repeated. Otherwise, it is terminated. This logic is repeated until the loop's condition is broken. The loop's body is executed at least once. If the loop's condition is always true, the loop will never end. Let's look at an example of do while loop. In this example, we will calculate the factorial of given number x again, but instead of an infinite while loop, we will use a do while loop. 
Let's put this program to test and see how it performs. In this program, we have a number x. We have to find the factorial of this number. We initialize the factorial number as 1 and then a loop to perform the factorial of the given number and decrease the number by 1 simultaneously. After we have determined the variable x must be greater than 0, we will compare the factorial to the given number of the value x. Now let's execute this program and see the output. There you go. The program got successfully executed and now it is asking for the value of x. Let us provide 5 instead of 1. The factorial of 5 is 120. So that's how the factorial and the do while loop executes. Now let's look at the next type of loop. The next type of loop is the for loop. While the functionality of a for loop is like that of a while loop, the syntax is a little different. When loop statements are to be executed are known ahead of the time, for loops are preferred. The loop variable initialization, condition to be tested and increment or decrement of the loop variable are all done in one line in the for loop, resulting in a shorter, easier to debug looping structure. The following is the scheme that describes for loops. The syntax is given below. In this loop syntax, we have the loop initialization, test condition, increment or decrement and statements to be executed. Let's go over the syntax of for loops. The variable controlling the loop is initialized here, which defines variable loop execution. It's the starting point of a for loop. A previously declared variable can be used or a new variable that is only local to the loop can be declared. And then we have a testing loop. The testing condition asserts the circumstance in which loop statements are executed. It is used to test the exit condition of the loop. It must either return true or false. When the condition is false, the control is removed from the loop and program is terminated. And finally, we have increments or decrements as well as the loop variable is incremented or decremented as needed and the control is returned to the testing condition. Let us look at how the flow diagram of for loop works. First, the initialization statement is executed. Typically, the variable is declared and initialized here. This variable is a counter flag because it controls the number of iterations the for loop will perform. The following steps in evaluating the for condition. The condition is a Boolean expression which returns true or false. These statements or programs within the for loop are executed if the condition is true. These iterations are repeated until the condition is determined to be false. When the condition evaluates to be false, the flow shifts from the inside to the outside of the loop. Let's look at the example. Let's look at an example. We will write a program that raises the number a to power of b and we will use a for loop to accomplish this. In this example, we have two variables a and b with a base number and b as exponent. Next, we ask the user to enter the value for a and b and we run the loop for 0 to exponent b. Then we perform how can we calculate the power of a rise to b and finally we will display the power of given numbers. Let's execute the program and see the output. There you go. The program got successfully executed. Now it's asking to enter a number. Let's enter 2. Let's enter another number that is power. Let's enter it as 2 to the power 3. There you go. The answer is 8. That's how the for loop works. Now following that we have for each loop. Let's try to figure out what is for each loop. For each loop in C sharp iterates through a collection of items, an array or a list. When each loop is executed, it executes a block of code on a collection of items, passing through the items in the collection and finally displaying them one by one. The syntax for for each loop is as follows. We have the for each keyword, then we have type of variable in collection, then we have a code for execution that resides inside the braces. The flow diagram of for each loop is shown below. Let's look at how the flow diagram of for each loop works. The for each loop iterates through the elements in a collection. When using a for each loop, it is mandatory to enclose statements in curly places. When declaring a lower counter variable, we can use same type of as array base type. Let's look at an example for for each loop. In this example, we create an array of numbers, which is then looped through and elements are printed on the console. Then the array of town names strings is created and proceeds in the same way with elements printed in the console as a result of the example. Let's get back to the practical mode and execute a practical one. In this program, we have an array as the number 
we have numbered as 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 and 16. Then we have for each loop while we run for an array of numbers with counter variable i. Then we have the town name as London, Paris, USA and New York. Again, we have for each loop. We have while for running town names and finally we will print both arrays and string. Let's quickly execute the program and see the output. So there you go. The program got successfully executed and we have our outputs on our screens. Following that we have our next C sharp loop that is nested loop. Let's try and understand nested loops in C sharp. Nested loops are programming constructs made up of several nested loops within each other. The innermost loop is executed more frequently while the outermost is executed less frequently. Let's look at two nested loops. The syntax of a nested for loop is same as that of a for loop with two for loops with the same variable initialization, testing condition and increment or decrement. Here is the flow diagram of nested for loops and we will now see how it works. Following the initialization of first for loop, the execution of its body which contains the second nested loop, we will begin. Its variable will be initialized, its condition will be checked and the code execution within the body is executed. Following by the variable being updated and execution containing until the condition is false. Following that, the second iteration of the first for loop will continue. Its variable will be updated and the entire second loop will be repeated. The inner loop will be executed as many times as the outer loop body is true. Here is an example of printing the triangle shape of a given number x to triangle with x lines on the console app using for each loop. Now let's get back to the practical mode. In this program, we attempted to create a right angle triangle with an asterisk and height of 5. We have value 5 because we will make a triangle up to 5. We have two variables that will handle row and column and finally we will have k for height. So the first for loop is running for row and the second for loop is running for column. Then we have another loop that will run up to 5 that is the height of the triangle. Finally, we will print the asterisk to create a right angle shaped triangle. Now let's quickly execute the program and see the output. So there you go, we have a right angle triangle made up of asterisk. After the nested loop, we have the continue and break statements. We will see what the continued statement is. Continue is one of many conditional statements in c -sharp programming language that can be used inside a conditional loop block to function as a clause to continue the loop execution after the iterative condition is executed to move on to the next execution of the next iteration in the conditional loop. It is commonly used with iterative conditional loops such as for while loop or do while loop and for each loop. Let's look at the flow diagram of the continue statement and to see how it works. When the loop begins, if there is a continue statement, it will stop at the current iteration and pass control to the next iteration by returning to the loop beginning. We will look at using the continue operator in the following example. Using the for loop, we will compute the sum of all odd integers in the range 1 to x that is not divisible by 9. Now let's execute the example for continue. Followed by that we will go ahead with break. So there you go. The program has executed and you have the output on my screen. Now let's continue with the break. First we set the variable of loop to 1 because it is the first odd integer in the range 1 to x. After each loop iteration we check to see if we have yet exceeded n i is equals to x in the expression for updating the variable. We multiply it by 2 to ensure that it only passes through odd numbers. We check whether the current number is divisible by 9 within the loop body. If this is the case, we use the continue operator which skips the rest of the loop's body adding the current number to the sum. If the number is not divisible by 9, the sum is updated to the current number. After that, we will have a break statement. Let's go over what it is. The break statement is used at the end of the for loop and that is present in. If it is present, the control will be passed to the statements that flow the break statement. If the break statement is present in the nested loop, it only terminates the loop that contains the break statement. The syntax is as follows. It is very simple because we only need to write break keyword. Following that we have the flow diagram of the break keyword and we will try to understand how it works. It checks for the specific condition at the start of the flow. If it is satisfied, the loop is continued. At the point where the loop gets break statement or the condition where it gets out of the loop, with break statement. Let's see an example of using break statement. First we initialize the variable factorial with 1 and read x from the console. We construct an endless while loop by using true as condition of the loop. We use the break operator to terminate the loop 
when x reaches a value less than or equal to 1. Otherwise, we multiply the current result by x and reduce x with one unit. Practically, the first iteration of the loop, the variable factorial, has a value n in the second. That is, x into x minus 1 and so on. In the last iteration of the loop, the factorial value is the product of x into x minus 1 into x minus 2 and so on, which is the desired result of factorial x. Let's quickly execute the program and see the output. So there you go. The program got successfully executed and we have 5 into 4 into 3 into 1, which is equals to 120. Finally, we have the switch statement. The switch statement in C-sharp is a multi-way branch statement. It provides an efficient method for transferring execution to different parts of a code based on the expression value. The switch expression is an integer type, int, char, byte, short, enumeration, or string type. The expression is checked for various causes and only one which matches is executed. Here, the syntax of switch statement where the switch keyword follows an expression. Then we have different cases starting with case 1 and go on up to case n. Then we have break keyword and finally with the default case which generally has default set of sequences. Here in the switch statement, flow diagram and let us try to understand how it works. Where the switch statement and expression is passed equally to one of the case values. If the value is not equal, the default case is used. This expression value is then compared to the case identifier or the first case. If the first case matches, the code associated with that case is executed. When you reach break, the execution will halt and exit the switch statement. If the case does not match, the execution moves on to the next case. If the case matches, the second code block is executed. Otherwise, the flow proceeds to the next case in the same manner. Finally, the default code block is executed if no case matches. Let's see an example of switch case. The user is asked to enter an alphabet in this example. If the alphabet is in uppercase, it is converted to lowercase using the to lower method. Now we are on the practical mode and that's the code on my screen. The switch statement checks to see if the alphabet entered by you is any of the given, that is A, E, I, O, U. If you have the cases matched, then the given character is a vowel, then it is printed as output. Otherwise, the control returns the default block and the given character is not a vowel and that message will be printed on your screen. Now, let's quickly execute the statement and see the output. So there you go, the program got successfully executed. Now, let's enter a, E, I, O, U, any of the one of those. So I'll enter A and there you go. The given character is a vowel. And if I had entered any other than E, I, O, U, the default message would have been printed. That is, the alphabet entered is not a vowel. Now that's how the switch statement works. With that, we have reached the end of this video. If you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session, or if you need the code examples we have executed in this session, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.